The small, rural town of Silver Hollow had always been a quiet place. Tucked away in the forests of northern Colorado, it was the kind of town where everyone knew each other, and nothing unusual ever happened. But that all changed one night in late October when strange lights appeared in the sky. Tom and Sarah Patterson lived just outside town, on a remote piece of farmland surrounded by miles of open fields and dense woods. Their home was isolated, far from the main road, and they liked it that way. It was peaceful, a perfect place to raise their son, Matt, who had just turned eight. That particular evening had started out like any other. Sarah was in the kitchen, cleaning up after dinner, while Tom sat in the living room, watching TV. Matt was in his room, drawing spaceships in his sketchbook, his latest obsession after watching a documentary about UFOs on TV. It was just after 9 p.m. when it happened. Sarah was wiping down the counters when the kitchen lights flickered. At first, she didn't think much of it, the house was old, and the power occasionally sputtered. But then she noticed a strange glow outside, faint at first but growing brighter. Tom. She called, walking to the living room window. Come look at this. Tom sighed, reluctantly pulling himself off the couch. He approached the window, squinting out into the darkness. What is it? He asked, but as soon as he saw the light, his breath caught in his throat. Outside, in the field behind their house, an eerie, glowing light hovered above the ground. It wasn't the headlights of a car or the beam of a flashlight, this light was soft, almost otherworldly, and it seemed to pulse in rhythm, casting long shadows across the yard. What the hell? Tom muttered, reaching for the front door. Wait, Sarah grabbed his arm, her voice trembling. Don't go out there. But Tom pulled away, stepping out onto the porch. The cool night air hit him, and the sound of crickets filled the air, but the light remained, silent, motionless, hovering in the distance. Matt. Sarah called, her voice shaking. Stay in your room, okay? Tom stepped off the porch and walked toward the light, his heart racing. The closer he got, the more unsettling it became. The light wasn't coming from the ground, it was coming from above. He looked up, and his heart nearly stopped. Hovering silently above the field was a massive, disc-shaped object. It was unlike anything he had ever seen, smooth, metallic, with a glowing underbelly that illuminated the ground beneath it. It made no noise, but the air around it seemed to hum with energy. Sarah. Tom shouted, backing away. Get Matt. But before he could take another step, the light intensified, bathing him in its glow. His vision blurred, and a strange sensation washed over him, like a wave of dizziness and nausea. He stumbled, disoriented, and then, without warning, the light shot upward into the sky, disappearing into the night. Tom collapsed onto the ground, gasping for breath. The field was dark and silent again, as if the strange object had never been there. Sarah rushed to his side, her face pale with fear. Tom. Are you okay? Tom struggled to his feet, his body trembling. I, I don't know. What the hell was that? Sarah shook her head, tears in her eyes. We need to call someone. The police, or... A scream cut through the air, sharp and terrified. Matt. Sarah bolted toward the house, her heart pounding. She raced down the hallway, throwing open the door to Matt's room. But Matt was gone. The police arrived within an hour, their flashing lights illuminating the Patterson's farmhouse. Deputies combed the property, searching the woods and fields for any sign of Matt, but it was as if the boy had vanished into thin air. Tom and Sarah were frantic, their minds racing with the horror of the situation. They had called everyone they knew, but no one had seen Matt. The local sheriff, 
A gruff man named Sheriff O'Malley, tried to keep them calm, but there was little he could do. A missing child was every parent's nightmare, and Matt had disappeared without a trace. You're sure there's no sign of him? O'Malley asked, his expression grave as he stood on the front porch with Tom and Sarah. We searched everywhere, Tom said, his voice shaking. The fields, the woods, the entire house. It's like he just disappeared. O'Malley nodded, glancing at the deputies who were still combing the area with flashlights. And you said you saw some kind of light. A UFO. Tom rubbed his face, feeling the weight of disbelief in O'Malley's voice. I know how it sounds, Sheriff, but I'm telling you the truth. There was something out there. It was hovering over the field, and then... It took off. And now Matt is gone. O'Malley sighed, shaking his head. We'll keep looking. Maybe he wandered off into the woods. It's possible he got scared and ran. We'll find him. But as the hours dragged on, there was still no sign of Matt. By dawn, the search had grown larger. Volunteers from the town joined the effort, forming search parties that spread out into the surrounding forests and fields. Drones were flown overhead, searching the vast landscape for any sign of the boy, but the only thing anyone found was an eerie silence. Sarah sat on the porch, numb with fear and exhaustion. Her mind kept replaying the events of the night before, the strange lights, the object in the sky, the way Matt's room had been empty, his bed neatly made as if he had never even been there. What if it wasn't just a dream? She whispered to herself, her thoughts drifting back to the stories she had heard growing up, stories about strange lights in the sky, about people disappearing and never being found. Tom, pacing restlessly nearby, looked over at her. What did you say? She glanced up at him, her eyes filled with tears. What if it wasn't just a dream, Tom? What if those lights? What if they took him? Tom's jaw tightened, and he shook his head. We can't think like that. We'll find him. We have to? But as the sun climbed higher in the sky, casting long shadows over the field where the lights had hovered, the reality of the situation began to sink in. Matt was gone. And no one could explain how or why. Three days passed, and still, there was no sign of Matt. The search had expanded, drawing in state police and specialized search and rescue teams, but the boy remained missing. Tom and Sarah were beside themselves with grief, clinging to the hope that their son would be found, but as the days dragged on, hope began to fade. Then, on the fourth night, something changed. It was just past midnight when Tom and Sarah were startled awake by a strange noise, a faint humming sound, barely audible, but unmistakable. They both sat up in bed, exchanging worried glances. Do you hear that? Sarah whispered, her heart racing. Tom nodded, his body tense. It's the same sound. From the night Matt disappeared. Without thinking, they both jumped out of bed and ran to the front porch, where the humming grew louder. The sky was clear, the stars shining brightly overhead, but there, hovering above the field once more, was the same eerie light they had seen four nights earlier. It's back, Tom muttered, his voice filled with dread. Suddenly, the light shifted, moving closer to the house, and then, just as quickly as it had appeared, it vanished, leaving the night silent once again. For a moment, neither of them moved. They just stood there, staring out into the dark field, their hearts pounding in their chests. Then, they heard a sound, a faint rustling, coming from the edge of the woods near the field. Did you hear that? Sarah asked, her voice trembling. Tom nodded his eyes wide with fear. It's coming from the woods? Without another word, they grabbed their flashlights and ran toward the sound. 
The beam of Tom's flashlight cut through the darkness as they approached the tree line, the rustling growing louder. Matt. Sarah called out, her voice shaking with a mixture of fear and hope. Matt, is that you? For a moment, there was silence. Then, from the shadows, a small figure stepped forward. It was Matt. Matt. Sarah cried, rushing toward him. She dropped to her knees, pulling him into her arms. Oh my god, Matt, where were you? What happened? But Matt didn't respond. His eyes were blank, staring off into the distance, his body cold and stiff. He didn't seem to recognize his mother or father at all. Matt. Tom knelt beside them, his voice filled with concern. Buddy, can you hear me? Still, Matt said nothing. They carried him back to the house, their hearts pounding with fear and confusion. Something was wrong, terribly wrong. In the days following Matt's return, Tom and Sarah tried to make sense of what had happened. The boy who had disappeared was not the same boy who had come back. Matt was distant, unresponsive, and his once vibrant personality had been replaced by a cold, emotionless demeanor. He didn't speak, didn't eat, and barely seemed to sleep. He would sit for hours, staring blankly at the walls or out the window, as if his mind was somewhere far away. Sarah had taken him to the doctor, but the tests revealed nothing. Physically, Matt was fine, no injuries, no signs of trauma, but mentally, it was as if he had been hollowed out. He's not the same, Sarah whispered one night, sitting at the kitchen table with Tom. I don't know what happens to him out there, but... It's like he's not really here anymore. Tom stared at his hands, his mind racing. Maybe it's some kind of shock. Maybe whatever happened to him? It traumatized him. But he's not scared, Sarah said, her voice trembling. He's just... empty. The strange humming sound had returned too, sometimes in the middle of the night, faint but always there, as if whatever had taken Matt was still watching them. Sarah had tried to talk to the sheriff, but O'Malley seemed skeptical, dismissing it as stress and exhaustion. But Tom wasn't so sure. He had seen the lights in the sky, felt the cold, disorienting wave of energy that had washed over him that night. And now, his son was different, changed in ways that no one could explain. That night, after Sarah had gone to bed, Tom sat in the living room, watching over Matt, who was sitting silently in the corner. His flashlight was on the table, and the front door was locked, but he couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. Suddenly, Matt moved. It was a small, almost imperceptible motion, but Tom saw it. The boy, who had been sitting still for hours, slowly turned his head toward the window, his eyes wide and unblinking. Matt. Tom asked, his voice low. Matt didn't respond. Instead, he stood up, his movements stiff and unnatural, like a puppet being controlled by invisible strings. He walked to the window and placed his hand against the glass, staring out into the night. Tom's heart raced. Matt, what are you doing? Slowly, Matt turned to face his father, his expression blank, his eyes dark and empty. And then, for the first time since he had returned, Matt spoke. They're coming. Tom froze, his breath catching in his throat. The words sent a chill down his spine, and for a moment, the room seemed to grow colder. Who's coming, Matt? Tom asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Matt didn't answer. Instead, he turned back to the window, his hand still pressed against the glass. Outside, the night was silent, the stars twinkling overhead. Tom stood up, his heart pounding in his chest. He walked over to his son, placing a hand on his shoulder. Matt, talk to me. 
Who's coming? Without warning, the lights flickered, and that familiar humming sound filled the air, louder this time. Tom's blood ran cold as he looked out the window. There, hovering above the field, were the lights. Sarah. Tom shouted, backing away from the window. Sarah, wake up. Sarah came running down the stairs, her face pale with fear. What's happening? They're back, Tom said, grabbing her arm. The lights, they're back. Outside, the glowing lights hovered in the sky, pulsing with an unnatural energy. The air around the house seemed to vibrate, and the hum grew louder, almost deafening. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the light shot downward, engulfing the entire house in its glow. Tom and Sarah were frozen, their bodies stiff as a strange sensation washed over them, a cold, numbing wave that made it impossible to move. They could feel the energy in the air, crackling like static, and for a moment, the world around them seemed to blur. And then, everything went black. When Tom and Sarah woke up, they were no longer in their house. They were lying on cold, metal tables in a dimly lit room that smelled of antiseptic. The walls were smooth, metallic, and curved, and the air was thick with an oppressive silence. A faint blue light illuminated the space, casting long shadows on the floor. For a moment, neither of them moved. Then, slowly, they sat up, their bodies aching and their minds racing with confusion. Where? Where are we? Sarah whispered, her voice trembling. Tom shook his head, his eyes wide with fear. I don't know. They both looked around, but the room was empty, no doors, no windows, just the cold, sterile walls and the faint hum of machinery in the distance. And then, they saw it. Standing at the far end of the room, barely visible in the dim light, was a figure. It was tall, thin, and humanoid, but its features were distorted, its limbs too long, its skin a sickly gray, and its eyes large, black, and unblinking. Tom's heart raced, and he instinctively reached for Sarah's hand. What the hell is that? The figure stepped forward, its movements smooth, and unnatural. It made no sound, but as it approached, Tom and Sarah could feel a presence, a cold, emotionless intelligence that seemed to seep into their minds. We've been watching you, a voice said, though it didn't come from the figure. It echoed in their minds, cold and mechanical. Sarah's breath caught in her throat. What do you want? The figure stopped in front of them, its black eyes staring down at them with an unsettling intensity. Your species is... interesting? You are adaptable? Resilient? Tom swallowed hard, his mind racing. What did you do to Matt? The figure didn't answer for a moment. Then, in that same cold, mechanical voice, it spoke again. The child was... altered. A test subject. We are studying the evolution of your species. Sarah's eyes filled with tears. What did you do to him? The figure tilted its head slightly, as if contemplating the question. He is... no longer the same. But you already know that. Tom's fists clenched. You have no right. The figure cut him off, its voice growing colder. We have been observing your planet for centuries. You are not the first, and you will not be the last. Sarah shook her head, her body trembling. What do you want from us? The figure stepped closer, its eyes unblinking. You have served your purpose. Suddenly, the walls of the room seemed to shimmer, and the blue light grew brighter, filling the space with an overwhelming energy. Tom and Sarah felt their bodies go numb again, their vision blurring as the light consumed them. When Tom and Sarah woke up, they were back in their house. The sun was rising, 
casting a warm glow over the fields outside. The air was still, and the strange humming sound was gone. For a moment, they lay there, dazed and disoriented, their minds struggling to make sense of what had happened. Then, slowly, they sat up, looking around. Everything seemed normal. But something was different. Matt, Sarah whispered, her voice trembling. Where's Matt? They scrambled out of bed and ran to Matt's room, their hearts pounding with fear. But when they opened the door, they froze. Matt was lying in his bed, sound asleep, his breathing steady and calm. Tom and Sarah exchanged a glance, their minds racing. Had it all been a dream? Had they imagined everything? But as they stood there, watching their son, they noticed something strange. Matt's skin was pale, paler than it had ever been. His breathing was slow, almost mechanical, and his eyes, though closed, seemed to twitch slightly, as if he were dreaming of something far away. Tom's heart sank. He's... he's not the same. Sarah nodded, tears streaming down her face. They did something to him. For the rest of the day, they tried to go about their lives as if nothing had happened, but the fear lingered. The strange humming sound was gone, the lights had disappeared, but they knew the truth. Matt had been changed. And deep down, they knew that the visitors would return. Because once you've been taken, they never truly leave. And neither do the memories. Months passed, and the events of that October night became a distant, haunting memory for Tom and Sarah. Matt had slowly returned to something resembling normalcy, though there were still moments when he would stare off into the distance, his eyes vacant, as if he were seeing something beyond this world. The town of Silver Hollow never learned the full truth of what had happened. The strange lights were written off as a weather anomaly, and Matt's disappearance was chalked up to stress and a temporary fugue state. But Tom and Sarah knew better. They knew the truth, that something out there, something far beyond human comprehension, had taken their son and returned him altered, changed in ways they couldn't fully understand. And sometimes, late at night, when the house was quiet and the world seemed still, they would hear it again. The faint, humming sound. A reminder that the visitors were still watching. And one day, they would come back.